Salam Kroger Malaysia. Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jessica Lee and you're watching News at 10. Making the headlines tonight. Nur Dabrita hands Malaysia golden start in the Hanoi Sea Games. Celebrate Idol Fitri in unity, embodiment of Keluarga Malaysia spirit. National diver Nur Dabita Sabri put on a sterling performance in the final of the women's one-meter springboard individual to present Malaysia with the first gold medal in the 31st Sea Games at the Maidin Aquatic Centre in Hanoi today. Now, this is also the first gold medal on offer at the biennial Games before the official opening ceremony, which is going to be held on Thursday. Nur Dabita, who had won four gold medals in her previous SEA Games outings, added one more to her collection after accumulating 290.45 points from five dives. It was a memorable start for Malaysia when Kimberly Bong Chen Ping grabbed the silver medal with 230 points. Hosts Vietnam's Ngo Phong Mai settled for bronze with 224 points. Nur Dabita can bag her sixth gold medal when she competes in the 10-meter platform synchronized with diving queen Dato Pandalela Rinong Palm on Wednesday at the same venue. Meanwhile, Chu Yi Wei Ui Ziliang had no problems presenting the national contingent with the second gold medal at the Sea Games after emerging tops in the men's three meter springboard synchronized at the Maidin Aquatic Center. Now, the victory meant that Yi Wei Ziliang managed to defend the gold they won at the 2019 edition in the Philippines. In today's action, Yi Wei Ziliang accumulated 395.79 points from six dives to beat Vietnam's Nguyen Tung Duong and Pong Thi An, who settled for silver with 305.64 points. Only two countries contested in the final. The Ziliang is set to return to action tomorrow when he competes in the men's one-meter springboard individual at the same venue. Several sports, among them football and diving, are being held earlier, although the 31st edition of the Sea Games is officially scheduled to be held from the 12th to the 23rd of May. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the presence of visitors from various backgrounds to the Prime Minister and Minister's Ideal Fitri Open House to celebrate Hari Raya together at Sri Pradana clearly demonstrated the unity of Kaluarga, Malaysia. He said a lively open house celebration this year, attended by more than 100,000 people, was extra special as the event could not be held for the past two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Itulah keistimewaan Malaysia sebenarnya sebagai sebuah negara yang berbilang kaum kerana walau apa pun perayaan ianya akan diraihkan secara bersama oleh semua kaum di negara kita. Tak kiralah sama ada Hari Raya Aidilfitri, Tahun Baru Cina di Pabali, termasuk juga di Gawai, Kaamatan dan sebagainya. The Prime Minister also called on the public to sincerely forgive each other in conjunction with the Shawal month. He also advised road users to get adequate rest before starting the journey back to their respective destinations after celebrating the Ideal Fitri holidays. Themed Raya Keluarga Malaysia Shawal di Rai Nikmat di Shukuri. It was the first open house hosted by Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri after he was appointed Prime Minister on the 20th of August 2021 and his cabinet lineup. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, the annual open house could not be held for two years. The last time it was held was on the 5th of June 2019 at Sri Pradana and was hosted by then Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Muhammad and his cabinet. Meanwhile, Yani Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al Mustafa Bilal Shah attended the Prime Minister and Minister's Idul Fitri Open House in Sri Perdana. Upon arrival at 11:30 a.m., His Majesty was greeted by the Prime Minister and Chief Secretary to the Government Tan Sri Muhammad Zuki Ali. 
Al Sultan Abdullah was then escorted to a special dining room to sample traditional village style dishes. His Majesty, after sampling the dishes, went to the main tent at Lamansari to meet and greet the visitors, accompanied by Deputy Ismail Sabri. Al Sultan Abdullah spent the time mingling with visitors who were clearly excited by His Majesty's presence in the tent provided for them. Now, the King also obliged requests to take photographs with him. Meanwhile, one of the guests, Hishamuddin Hassan 39, who has a child with special needs, Afif Kairula 7, was touched when His Majesty came and greeted his son, who suffers from Dravet syndrome. Al Sultan Abdullah left after spending an hour at the open house. Now, in other developments, the Prime Minister expressed his satisfaction over the people's compliance with the stipulated standard operating procedures, or SOPs, throughout the idle fitri period. He said, based on observations, people still prioritise and practise self-discipline despite the ease of restrictions permitted by the government. Saya gembira melihat orang ramai yang hadir walaupun mulai daripada 1 Mei 1 Mei penggunaan topeng muka tidak lagi menjadi kemesian yang menjadi kesalahan kalau berada di tempat terbuka seperti ini tapi saya lihat masih ramai yang mengada membuat kawalan kendiri kerana masih ramai yang memakai topeng muka, uh, pelitup muka walaupun kelonggaran telah diberi. Ini merupakan satu tindakan yang bijak kerana walaupun kita diberi kebebasan tapi untuk menjaga kesihatan diri dan keluarga masih terletak kepada kita. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri also expressed appreciation to everyone that is taking the voluntary measures to protect themselves and prevent the spread of COVID-19. On the 27th of April, the government announced several relaxations, including the option for the people to not wear any face masks outdoors from the 1st of May, as well as the permission to not scan the MySajatra QR codes for contact tracing. In another development, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri reminded all Malaysians to appreciate and treasure the hard work and sacrifices done by their mothers in conjunction with Mother's Day. The Premier said mothers have made a lot of sacrifices in bringing up their children so that they can become useful individuals in the future. Saya mengucapkan selamat hari ibu kepada semua, seluruh ibu yang berada yang di seluruh negara dan di mana saja berada kerana Tanpa ibu, siapalah kita. Ibulah yang membentuk kita menjadi seperti yang kita ada hari ini. Terima kasih kepada semua ibu yang berada di Malaysia dan seluruh di mana saja berada. Let's take a look at the traffic. Now, the traffic on most roads heading towards the Klang Valley is still clear as city dwellers return from their hometowns after the Hari Raya Ideal Fitri celebrations and the long festive holidays. Now, checks on highways showed lesser volume of cars compared to yesterday and traffic was moving smoothly with congestion reported only on certain roads leading into the city. As of 8 p.m. today, for the route heading to the Klang Valley from the east coast, a congestion was reported at the Gombak Toll Plaza. The traffic coming from the north and south is still smooth, with no significant congestion or major accidents reported from both directions towards Kuala Lumpur. However, in the northern states, traffic was a bit slow in Sungai Petani Selatan heading towards Sungai Dua Toll Plaza, in Sabrang Jaya heading towards Jawi, as well as Sungkai heading towards Slim River. For the route from the south, traffic is moving smoothly with only a slight congestion in Dunkil heading towards Shah Alam. There are free toll rates on the North South Expressway and the East Coast Expressway or LPT will end by midnight tonight. Kereta Api Tanah Melayu Berhad or KTMB has been urged to continue the special express train service offered during the festive season to reduce traffic congestion in Kelantan during the Bali Kampung exodus. Now, Menteri Besar Dato' Ahmad Yaakob said the initiative would help to fulfil the needs of those looking for alternative ways to return to their villages or hometowns for the festive occasions. 
Explaining further, Datu Amas said the overwhelming response for Keluarga Malaysia Ideal Fitri Special Express train service by the public could be used by KTMB as a yardstick to continue to make the service available during the festive seasons. Ini sebagai satu percubaan, nampaknya bagus sambutan dan kita minta supaya kerajaan minta supaya diadakan so, seminggu sekali ke sekolah atau sebulan sekali atau waktu ataupun untuk musim perayaan, perayaan hari Cina ke atau apa-apa perayaan, sebenarnya orang Kelantan dia suka balik ke Lata Kampung. He further said apart from the affordable fare, the special train has become an option and is well received because it is equipped with facilities such as coach with beds, toilets and a cafe. Meanwhile, KTMB Chief Operating Officer Mohamed Zain Mataha said a total of 815 passengers had returned to hometowns for Hari Raya using the service on the 29th of April. Alhamdulillah, sambutan yang diterima dah selepas 3 jam, kita buka uh, lebih 70% telah terjual. Uh, jadi memang apa ni uh, memang uh, sebenarnya pengimatan itu memang dinantikan uh, disebabkan uh, apa ni pilihan kepada pengimatan tren ini adalah dia menawarkan pengimatan yang selamat dan selesa. Malaysia to reinforce position as investment destination. The broadening bilateral linkages opportunities with the Central Agenda on Environmental, Social and Governance, or ESG, as well as Supply Chain Resilience, will be the key focus during Senior International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Muhammad Azmin Ali's Trade and Investment Mission to the United States. Now, scheduled for the 9th to the 18th of May, the trip aims to reinforce Malaysia's value proposition as the preferred investment destination and trading partner. In a statement released today, the ministry said the mission is paramount for Malaysia to engage with American business counterparts and further enhance Malaysia-US economic cooperation. It said in Washington, Datuk Sri Azmin is scheduled to have meetings with the U.S. Secretary of Commerce, Gina M. Raimondo, and the U.S. Trade Representative Ambassador, Catherine Tai. The meetings would highlight Malaysia's capabilities and capacities in strategic sectors, including advancing ESG in trade and investment and the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. Datuk Sri Azmin and Raimondo would also be signing a Memorandum of Cooperation or MOC between Malaysia and the United States to promote deeper bilateral cooperation in semiconductor supply chain resilience efforts. The MOC undoubtedly demonstrates Malaysia's significant role in ensuring the stability of the global supply chain in the manufacturing sector and its related services. Notably, the National Investment Aspirations Policy will feature prominently in the core discussion topic during the mission. Now, police have arrested a man to assist in the investigation into the case of a boy with a disability who is believed to have been hit and bullied in the Taiping Lake Gardens area yesterday. Taiping Police Chief ACP Osman Mamad said the 22-year-old unemployed suspect was arrested at the District Police Headquarters compound at 10.45 p.m. According to ACP Osman, the suspect is in remand for three days from today until Tuesday. Yesterday, police detected a video clip lasting one minute and two seconds, which has been circulating on Facebook entitled Disabled Malay Boy Being Hit and Bullied in Piping Lake Gardens. And following that, police opened an investigation paper in Section 323 and 506 of the Penal Code. ACP Osman said that the 2 a.m. incident stemmed from the suspect who wanted to borrow the 13-year-old victim's bicycle. However, the victim, who was cycling alone in the area at that time, refused to lend him the bicycle, causing the suspect to slap and bully him. Now, ACP Osman added that the victim is now reported to be in stable condition and the investigation is ongoing. The firefighters retrieved the remains of a male teenager after they put out a fire at the Desa Bayan apartment in Pulau Pinang this morning. 
State Fire and Rescue Department Assistant Director of Operations, Muhammad Hafiz Hafizal Tima Radin, said the fire involved a room in an apartment unit located on the eighth floor, measuring 100 square meter. Elaborating further on the matter, he said they received a distress call at 8.59 a.m. and the first engine arrived at 9.06 a.m. He added when they arrived at the scene, they found out that there was a fire on the eighth floor and they had to break open the locked door of the affected unit. Setelah kita berjaya masuk ke dalam bilik dan juga membuat padaman, kita dapati uh, terdapat uh, seorang mangsa lelaki dewasa, OKU, telah uh, meninggal dunia yang mana keadaan uh, mangsa hampir 80% uh, peratus, uh, terbakar. The remains of the 18-year-old boy was handed over to the police before being brought to the Pulau Pinang Hospital for further action. The force of the fire is still under investigation. And with that, we end News at 10. A recap of our top story, Nord Dabita hands Malaysia golden start in Hanoi Sea Games. Join us for more updates at 12.30 tomorrow. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.